everybody. Welcome back to Saturday Night Movies, your friendly podcast who tends to rip shit down. I know. I don't know. <laughs> weak sauce. Well, we're friends. So that's about as much weak sauce what? That, that, you didn't even say the name of the, the full name of the podcast. You kind of just like started high and then uh, started trickling down. Hi, this is Saturday Night <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I thought I said Saturday Movies. Oh, okay. And then a podcast. <laughs> These are my friends. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Can, can you do like a narration like Morgan Freeman? <clears throat> Hello, guys. It's Get been your 38 voice. years since oh, we've seen you. <laughs> I miss my friend. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Saturday Night Movies podcast, where I miss my friends and I ask them together. <laughs> to come and to come and meet me to watch movies and talk about them. So this week, my friend, my best friend, my husband <laughs> picked a movie for us to watch. Mm -hmm. What is that movie? Pinky Winky. Pinky Winky. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not red. I don't know. You're not red. Pinky. <laughs> Yo, Pinky Winky. So I picked. The Shawshank Redemption. Wait, the wait reason say I that picked one more it, time? The Shawshank Redemption? The Shawshank. The Shawshank. Shout it. Shout it, Shank. That's the 2020 <laughs> remake. Is the the Shawshank, Shawshank, Shawshank Shank. Redemption. <laughs> oh, my God. Bench. I can see it starring Puff Daddy and uh, what's his face? Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Cat Eminem. Williams. Cat Williams <laughs> is Andy Dufresne. Oh God! Well, he's small enough to and go. And then to at the end, you fight. find out. Yeah, I shot him. <laughs> but they didn't catch me. Anyway, I picked the Shawshank yes. Redemption, regardless of my accent. The Shawshank. And, and I I picked it because uh, Katie, you said that you one of the things that you like are prison movies, and you've admitted you've never seen this movie, and this is possibly. The greatest prison movie ever made. Um, so I thought I would introduce that to you and, and see what you thought about it. Yep, this is the first time I saw this movie. Huh? <laughs> you should so quiet. <laughs> and plus, it's based on a what is it, a short novel by Stephen King? So a I thought, novella you know, or a short story by that, Stephen King? That uh, that should have been too. Which literally, this from line one. I'm like, this screams like a Stephen King movie, TV mm -hmm. show, because it always saw like, well, let me tell you a story. Back when I was just a wee boy, there was this one character and another character. There wasn't really a plot, but it's all characterization. Oh, I see. <laughs> and they were my friends. <laughs> and there was a bird with a maggot. <laughs> <laughs> I have something to bring up about that later. Okay. Don't let me forget about that fun fact. So yeah, I, I've seen this movie countless times. I will say I haven't seen it from start to finish a lot of times, maybe like a handful of times, because usually I catch it when it's on TV and it's always after Andy's already in the prison. And then I'll just sit down and I'll watch it till the end. But um yeah, this one for me it's it's a classic. What about you? Me? I mean, um, I've been watching this since it came out on VHS. My mom loved it. Was it two oh, tapes? Oh, that's old yes. school. It was two tapes. It came from, I think, the Columbia Movie House. Like, when you could get, like, the different VHS, like, ten tapes a month or whatever. Hello. Hello. Look who has a phone. That's us now. Yeah. Now <laughs> you actually have a house back. phone? They probably they they want us to come back. It's either that or Jehovah Witnesses. Now they're starting to call. This is true. They're starting Are to make phone serious? calls. Yeah, I don't Are even know really? how they got my number. Yeah. Oh. I got God. I got a phone. Hi, this is so and so for. It's probably the same girl that wrote us twice in the mail during. I just COVID. don't know how do they get our address. Well, the address I could understand because they, they go door to door. But how do they the get inside. the number? They have people on the inside. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, the good Lord. They're like, right. these people need some saving. They need some Jehovah's in their life. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> go to the Shawshank. The Shawshank and go, go and get save a whole these dog. souls. Go get a whole dog. Have you ever heard him say hot dog? I say hot dog. 
Dog. Hot dog. Deb, I had dog. to say it. Dog. Hold dog. H O L. Are you Indian now? Hold dog. No, no that's not right. It's amazing. Hot dog. You can hold dog. <laughs> Um, okay, so back to before we were previously interrupted by the Jehovah Witnesses. Yes. Um, I grew up on this, as stated, and I've only seen it two times. The first time when I was young and the other day for this podcast, because there is one scene that hurts to watch. And I always fast forward that scene. And I got your text when <laughs> when it happened. Um that so uh, usually I just fast forward that part, but you definitely you honor the man. <laughs> I, I honor it for this. Um, but we even talked about it because you said you've seen a ton of times. I've seen a ton of times. I think between the two of us each between 15 and 20 times in our lifetime, we've seen this movie. I would say more. I think I've seen that alone. Mm-hmm. Maybe that many times. Okay, then no. I've seen a lot of times. Look at Katie, she's stunned. Like, like, how? And Katie's like, how? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> so, what about you, Katie? What do you mean? What about me? Well, you've never seen it, so no. what's your guess? Because clearly we're fans. Oh. So. Mm-hmm. oh, so for the description rating, I gave it a five because I was just like, I like prison movies, but it's a Stephen King movie, so I know it's going to be more about characterization over plot. And that can be a very long movie. <laughs> it was. Oh. Um, then I watched the trailer and I gave it a five. And then I watched the movie. And we will count us down. Mm. Yes. You want to count us down? Well, uh, we didn't share what we thought we would. We've it. already oh. seen it oh, a thousand yeah. times. I know, but well, still. I, well, what, what did you? I mean, my bias answer is a 10. I said that maybe um, going into it like critically, I would give it an eight. Yeah, that's what. Well, I was at, I was critically going to go into an eight, but unbiasedly, it's a ten. Okay, yeah. so count us down, Katie, so that yeah, we can it. swim five hundred yards, five football fields, for okay. shit to come out clean. In three, two, one, show your numbers. Oh, okay. I gave it an eight. Lisa Cut. gave it an eight. And I give it a nine. And, and there's the prison nine. warden. He pissed me off. <laughs> oh my god. Like I had a feeling he would. And then he's like a pussy and blows his brains out mm-hmm. because he doesn't want to be held accountable for running a shit show. And his whole fucking Bible thumping. Oh, the Lord will save you. No, dude. Like you're obviously one of the bad ones. Like doing shady stuff, yeah. <laughs> Like cooking the books. Mm -hmm. So would we like to see what the internet has to say? This actually, I believe, is the highest rated film that we've ever watched and reviewed. Internet Movie Database gave it a 9.3, Rotten Tomatoes a 91, and Google a 96. So it is definitely like a classic. Classic. Because like for me, bias, is it's a Mm 9. But critically, there's a couple issues to go into, but um, yeah. Well, you know who saved this movie? Morgan Freeman and that bird. Yep. <laughs> and Jake that bird. and the bird. <laughs> like, well, um, I found him. He was hot. He fell out of his nest, so I'm gonna feed him. So, so when he, free. so when he fed the maggot, I looked up. Did you see the trivia? Because I know you like looking up trivia. Did you see the trivia about the maggot? No, I didn't look it up. This. Time. So the little, as everyone's like. You know, can I have that maggot to feed baby Jake? So the huma- the Animal Humane Society was on scene, like on set, to make sure no animals, aka the crow, was harmed. And when they saw that the maggot was going to get fed to Jake, they were upset and they demanded that they they stop production. And they said you cannot feed this bird. It's in it's inhumane to feed a bird a live maggot. So you must find not only a dead maggot, but the maggot had to die organically. And so they did, and then they were able to shoot the scene. Wow. 
Do that's people, why do, her face right on, there. That's on. why I said do this these, thing. Do these people know what happens in the real world? Like what happens so. in nature? I don't think. Like, yeah. Do they think that that maggots just kind of die of natural causes, and then they, the birds eat them? <laughs> but and they, the birds stand back and wait, wait, but, no, 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 son, no, son. We have to wait till it dies. It's a humane thing to do. But that's what happened. Is the fact that who who allows these people on set? I don't know. <laughs> who even tells them that they're shooting this scene? <laughs> like who? So this, like wait, yeah, wait, I need to. Know, I have a lot of questions. When a movie is made, right? Do you do you literally have to go out and tell PETA? Is, is it PETA? Or? No, it was the and the Animal Humane Society or the Humane Animal same, Society. Same, it's same, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have to tell them we have a scene that involves an animal? Because at the end of the day, who is inviting these people to to come on set? Like, granted. Yeah, you don't want the bird to get harmed, but yeah. at a certain point, it becomes ridiculous. I don't know that like, there there could be some kind of like if you have an animal, you might have to have like a permit or something that probably alerts them to alert them, whatever the case may be. So this is the fact I was telling you this morning. I wanted to keep from you because I wanted Katie's reaction and your reaction. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. So the fact that they had to find a maggot that died of natural causes organically death it's the fact that they were putting this poor maggot to death for a scene that was against the maggot's life what i would do is i would have on set i would have on set like an iguana or something or like a gecko and then after they want that whole maggot scene to happen, I'm like, oh, okay, I got to go feed my pet. And just put live crickets in the thing and just let let the reptiles have at it. And just sit back and watch and just keep looking at the person. I'm just saying they thought it was sick. How do they go fishing? <laughs> they don't. They, they don't, don't eat fish. They don't eat fish? No, they're probably vegans. They eat dirt. Animals <laughs> they look dirt. Yeah, they go. look for the nutrients. But they can't do that because there's like little tiny bugs in there, so they're exactly. Their so, they can, so what are they doing? Just like sucking air? No, you remember that lady <laughs> that we saw on Wife Swap? There was a wife that used to like get her nutrients. She wouldn't eat during the day, so she would just stare at the sun without blinking. She felt that she got all of her vitamins. <laughs> See, what I don't understand oh either God. is aren't I mean technically <laughs> plants are living now. things. Plants are living things. We're getting into a huge discussion, babe. Like no, but but they I'm can saying, regrow. If you cut off a leg of an animal, that it can't regrow grow it. But if you not cut all off, not all animals are like that. You can cut what what is it? A worm? You can cut a worm in half. It'll grow back. Iguanas. Yeah, tails, reptiles. Yeah. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> well, then I guess you could feast upon the lizard tails and worms. <laughs> That's what they eat: iguana tails. <laughs> What a smoothie. <laughs> what are those? Friends? They make them those, into churros. Those? <laughs> Iguana tail churros. You go get the chukra. <laughs> um, That's ridiculous. Hold on. I, I want to make sure that it is completely, I want to say it out loud. So the American Humane Society monitored the filming of scenes involving Brooks's crow. During the scene where he fed it a maggot, the, A8, the AHS objected on the grounds that it was cruel to the maggot and required that they use a maggot that had died from natural causes. One was found and the scene was filmed. I wonder. I would <laughs> love to see the behind the scenes of how they found that second maggot. Oh, you know, like if, the if the director was like, listen, just go behind the building right now. I want you to kind of squish this or just put like a pin through the brain or something. <laughs> And Pith bring it, it back. Do the little pithing of the brain. Yeah. <laughs> like how did, or, how did, or he's on the phone to like every single pet shop. I need a dead maggot. Just just one. Oh, you don't have any? God damn it. <laughs> imagine the stress. Imagine <laughs> the stress that PA had to go through to oh, find. God. I mean, honestly, what they probably would have had to do is just like. Hit it with a hammer. It's dead. It died naturally. Yeah, there you go. Like the witches. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> um, so how about like what did you guys think oh, of the man. Movie? I, can I get oh, to one more on. thing about the uh, maggot one more thing about the maggot do you think if when they came back with the dead maggot somebody on that team was like we got to kind of perform a quick autopsy first <laughs> we need idols. to know that this maggot died of natural causes that or okay we got to do our blessing ceremony <laughs> because this maggot gave its life to be on yes. this <laughs> I just I don't I don't <laughs> and get so it in the cows and the pots on their heads 
<laughs> slices open. Oh no, you can't slice open a goat head. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> they just slice I open. Didn't, honestly, I did not expect this the the trivia to get this. Especially you fired up. That's I insane. had more hope that Katie would fire up. <laughs> Damn. <That's insane. laughs> okay. So what did you guys like about the film? Uh, I had one. Okay. You had my one? Biggest, <laughs> my biggest thing. Of, well, no, I didn't write them all down. Oh. Okay. Um, because I knew I would go on tangents. Um, so my biggest, biggest pro of this movie, because I was so sad, <laughs> was when at the very end they met up and I was like, they're friends again. <laughs> I got that text and I couldn't stop laughing because I kept getting, this is so sad. Mm. Oh my God. No, they killed the guy. That guy, he, the warden better get it. What? He's a pussy. Oh no. And they're friends again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because like when, when Morgan Freeman was doing his narration, he's like, maybe I just miss my friend. And I was like, <laughs> you got her feels. <laughs> you got the feels happening. Because yeah. they spent like how many years together? Like nineteen. Like nineteen. Mm -hmm. So Andy was in for nineteen. He uh who was it? Um Red was in for like thirty or something. No, forty, I think. Was it forty? I think I was it was almost forty. Almost yeah, because forty because Brooks when, was in for fifty years. Yes, and when Andy came in. Uh, Red had already done twenty of his. So, so yeah, what was Red in there for? for murder. Okay, so it was for murder. Now that's another trivia that um, they never really expanded. I think it might be in the book a little bit, but basically he tried. It, he was supposed to be serving for three life terms, um, and he he attempted to kill his wife by cutting the brakes, but then his son and his neighbor were in the car or something and all three died. Oh, wow. So that's, that's why like they touch on him getting parole three, like parole hearings three times. It's kind of like a nod Towards to it. Mm. Yeah. And something that is not said, but like kind of like a urban myth or something like that is that Brooks killed his wife and his kid. And mm. that's why he was in for 50 years. Damn. Only fifty oh, years. Oh, over, over, because there's something about gambling. I think, like something about gambling. I don't know about all that. So, I just like I said, felt, it was an urban. I just felt really, really bad for Brooks because by that point he was institutionalized, and I was like, mm -hmm. dude, just go rob a bank, wave a gun around, and they'll take you back. Like, and then you can live out the rest of your days no. in prison with your friends. Instead, he killed himself, and I was like, but it would be sad too, like if he did go back to prison because he wouldn't have his birth. Jake, yeah. And if you think about it, Jake Jake flew off. Was Jake his kid's name? I have no idea. But so that Jake would be creepy. Jake as a little baby bird, and then when he threw like when he flew away, th that bird would had to have been like ten to fifteen years. Right. But you gotta think too, like he was going back, Andy was already gonna be gone. And yeah. and Morgan Freeman would have been gone, and he said and, that he was in the library. They stuck him in the library all by himself, and he was there alone. So like, the only friend that he had was Jake, Jake yeah. and he let him go. So I think that going back, he would have been well. Because remember, he was too. sitting there waiting again. I just miss my friend. Just he, hoping he would come back. Yeah, feed that the was birds. so sad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that the the the, the amazing sad. thing, the amazing sad. thing about the scene and how powerful they made it is that they took the narration, put it on top of the things happening, but the music, it was like so simple. It was just like simple notes on a piano. And it was like, it just added to, to the sadness. And you know, film. another cool part of this mm -hmm. movie, maybe as cool as Morgan Freeman and his like white boy lover meet up again is <laughs> I told you it's just gonna go there. <laughs> is there was rain? There was a storm. Yes, <laughs> there was. There a storm. was that. It was so, a literal shit show, or a little <laughs> it was a shit shower. It was it was intense, and I think that was the only time we ever saw rain in the entire movie. Mm -hmm. So, talking about the narration, another trivia: what you like, Goodfellas, right? Mm -hmm. So the director, I think it was the director Frank Darabont. Mm -hmm. 
while he was filming this entire movie, every night when he would go home, he would constantly watch Goodfellas every day for weeks and months um, to get the narration down. And that's good, the that's, timing. That's good practice because Martin Scorsese, a lot of his movies yeah. are like that, where it's like narration over what's happening. And, and huh? I haven't seen Goodfellas since high school, so I don't even remember. Oh, well, I'm, I might pick a Scorsese film coming up. If you that's do, it better be it better be the one that a I good like. one. Yeah. Huh? A good one. I like one? The Departed. It's a good one. Uh, I think The Departed is a good one. Yes, that's an amazing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I'm thinking of Inception. Never mind. That's no. the one no. at the top at the end. But um, yeah. but I forgot what it was. <laughs> Something about the well, we're talking about the narration and the timing and Scorsese. Yeah, that that would be that would get, be good practice to do. And Dar Darbont, Frank Darbont, he's mm -hmm. the reason that there's a Walking Dead show because he's the one that's that started it. Oh, really? Yeah, he started the first season, and they didn't like where he was going with it mm -hmm. because so you know, out. as as we've seen in this movie, he likes a lot of character building and like yeah. the, the slow story See, and, so, and that would have made the walking dead so much better well he was going in that direction they didn't really like where he was going because they felt that it was kind of drifting away from like the source the material and then there was a big thing and they kicked them out after season one That's interesting because yeah. i actually really enjoyed season one of the walking dead because we got to know the characters so well that's why you see um you remember dale from the walking dead the one that had the rv Yes. He was in the Shawshank. He was the lawyer that was um, questioning That's Andy in the beginning. Yeah. I, I looked at that dude's face and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I know him from somewhere. Uh -huh. Dale like, face. <laughs> and, and I want to also say he was in another movie we recently watched too. He was. Like, he played like an angry, an angry old guy who was like yelling all the time. I don't know. <laughs> Shocker, right? Yeah, but so, I mean, one thing that I liked was um, whenever they had, there was like a lot of scenes where um, you'd hear a conversation happening and then you would see a flashback of kind of like the, the opening courtroom scene there, like he's, he's uh, questioning Andy. And while you're seeing it, you're seeing basically what was happening that night in question. Um, the same thing with like Brooks with what he was doing and his narration. Sometimes there were scenes with um, Red and Andy where they were talking and then all of a sudden it would like their one conversation would travel across like two or three scenes. Like when they were talking about um, the scam that he was running and then Andy's like, oh, I didn't learn to be a criminal until I came to jail. And then the very next scene they're in the yard, but they're still having that same conversation. I, I, I like when movies do that. Yeah, where it doesn't just end there. Yeah. I, I also like the the idea of the concept. But what was it? Um, I hear you're a man who can get things. You know, like that. And that carried on not only just in a couple scenes, but throughout the film. Mm -hmm. You know, like Red was always like upping it and, and everything. And you know? that whole, um, I need a, what was it? A rock, rock hammer? hammer? Yeah, yeah, right. He's like, what's that? And it's like this little tiny like, <laughs> and, and they laugh him out. <laughs> but it's cool because like when you first see it, you see the end that's like so long, and then by the end when they hold it up and like they take the picture, it was like like he said it was down to a nub. It was, and like the fact he's like I I thought it would take what four hundred years mm -hmm. for somebody to break out of uh, Shawshank, and it took old end uh, nineteen. It's under twenty. Yeah, I'm but, the thing years. about that though is this: when there were always like those su like surprise inspections, mm -hmm. they were ripping that room apart. And you're trying to tell me that like not one asshole guard is going to attempt to rip down his pictures? Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. And it took the uh, warden throwing something in a fit to realize there's something behind yeah. that but i i think that I maybe that to answer that maybe the fact that by the time he got the first poster he was already on the guard's good side and so i don't think that there would be reason for them for them to be as excessive granted they threw like they threw the bed apart and like they shuffled through mm. um and they uh, like the stuff tipped. that he had 
But if you think about it, all the all the things that he had carved on the windowsill, they never knocked it on actually, the floor. Actually, actually, if you and think and that about could be it, contraband because that could be used as a weapon. But he did rocks. he did mention it because when the warden came to the cell, the head guard he told them there's some contraband here, but nothing to so nothing to go over the top. I was thinking that same thing because I never thought about that until mm -hmm. you know having to look critically. But where did he keep the rock hammer? In the Bible. In the Bible. It all hinged on if the warden opened the Bible or not. And what's interesting, I think, that whoever came up with that little part that he is so biblically on the outside, and they had the like the whole back and forth of the verses. Mm. Um, but he actually showed that he's not a biblical man because, because he, he didn't even bother. It. Yeah, he doesn't even open it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of like here you go. But he even walked away with it. He's like, oh wait, hold on, I want to give you back the good book. My question oh, is salvation. too. My question is too is, Isn't would you him? feel the difference in weight? Would you feel like that there's because it's that was it's, a thick Bible. Babe. It is, but you got to understand too. It was cut, so a lot of the pages were taken out. So I, don't I know, know if but you would but feel, the rock hammer was pretty much like, like it, no, it I know, makes but, up but for the weight. Was it of. was it was it a perfect like it fit perfectly, or when you hold it, was it like jiggling around? I think oh. it, I, I, it looked like it almost was snug. Because thing is, Andy was not stupid, yeah. and that's one thing like so many people underestimated him, and yet. Because he was the quiet, like the yeah. silent trope. Like yeah. he, he, he might look like a simpleton, but mm -hmm. <laughs> he ain't as stupid as we thought. Do you do well, you think? Um, what was the line? Do you think from uh, at what point do you think he was ready? Like he was planning to escape. Do you think it was as soon as he got there? Do you think it was by the time he asked for the rock hammer, or do you think it was? By the time he knew that he was going to be doing taxes for the for the guards. No, I think his plan to escape was when he um, had the rock hammer because he like legitimately. Yeah. And then because you remember how they showed it where he was carving his name and, he took and it felt. And I think in his mind, he's like, you know what, this could or at least see how far he can go because he had time, you know, yes. so. I think I don't think he had the full on plan plan until that little piece came and he probably what if he like say that kid never died, mm -hmm. right? What if that never happened? But he also knew there was no way that that He's gonna get out. yeah, because he was trapped with the warden. Because I thought that it was like it, I never thought about it when um they're on the roof and they're tarring the roof and then um he he uh he tells the guard how he can save money and um, he asked for beers for all the guys so they can feel, you know, like human men. again or yeah. like men again. Um, I always thought like when he was sitting in the corner and he was smiling, like I never really thought deeply into that. But then rewatching it, I was thinking maybe he was smiling because he knew he got his now in. He, was gonna, he yeah. Not only did he have his in with the guards, but it was gonna open up. A world where maybe he could be financially set with what he yeah. was doing. Well, because um, like in that in that sense, he was like in good favor with the guards because now he's the smart boy. He could help these guys, but then he's also in good with the group of prisoners, so he has protection from the gay guy who kept trying to like. Did he actually rape? I think he did. I, I think. Feel I, like yeah, I think he got raped. Okay, because he said because when when. Uh, Freeman, when Red was uh, narrating, he said sometimes he was able to fight him off, sometimes not. So I think the times not, they had their okay. way with him. Because like I, th I thought like he, he might have, but then I'm like maybe he's just getting like jumped by all these guys. But uh -huh. then the then the time when he was like, you're gonna suck me up, and then you're gonna suck him up, and you're gonna suck that one off, and that one off. And not <laughs> even that, not even that. The time where like he was in the laundry and like he pulled out the the thing, the powder to throw in their eyes. They basically put him up against like one of the drums, and he was undoing his pants. So I think every single time they went to attack him, it was to rape him. Yeah, well, because they were the sisters. Which you know what. <laughs> This movie, like this movie is a, in a prison. It's a prison coven. And then this, he got beaten so bad he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. 
eating Wasn't through it like through that? a straw. Yeah, yeah, eating food through a straw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this this movie, it's like this is like some real horror. I like I know you watch horror that's not like this, but this is the type of horror that if you think about it, like a man is who innocent. is innocent has to do two life sentences, is constantly being raped or attacked, and it's like no way to get out. It's like that's some <laughs> that's some scary well, stuff. That okay. and oh, it pissed me off when the warden was like, "Yeah, so um, I'm gonna need you to do me a favor and just die," because the little the, like the kid was all like, "Yeah, I was in prison, and this one guy told me that he shot some doctor and this girl who was cheating on her husband," and then we find out shit, he really didn't do this. Yeah, and golf so, pro. <laughs> the <laughs> golf pro. <laughs> and like to to think that that actually does happen to people like we still hear today like in in today's time hear stories of i spent 35 years in jail for a murder i didn't commit and just no one listened to me and now it's like oh okay here's a settlement of like a million dollars or like a hundred grand okay you're free to go it's like you're not going to get those how many ever years mm -hmm. back and the trauma yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it's, I mean, it never and the institutionalized stuff. Yeah, like when he was like, "I'm institutionalized now." I can't, I can't pee without asking for permission. Yeah. That's crazy. That's like I should still feel bad about Booker or Brooks or whatever his name is. Brooks, Brooks. It was so sad when he was on the bus, <laughs> and like then when he was like, "I cool. once saw an automobile when I was a little boy, and now they're everywhere." And like, what was it? Oh, what was the line of that? Um, the world. Uh, got in a hurry. What was it? Um, got in a damn hurry. Something like that. And it's like to think that, to think that, because we did the math and Brooks, he probably had to be first in prison. Like it was around 1907. The, we figured it yeah, out. Yeah, like 1907 based on the time. So oh, for him yeah. not to, to see a car and then to come out. What, and they're the, everywhere. Uh, he it came, was like the 30s was, or no, 40s? No, no. He was released in... Uh, no, it was, it was 19, No, he yeah, was released was in 1957 50, yeah. because Andy um, was uh, well. What's his face was released like late 60s. Okay. Because he was there another 10. Yeah, because Andy came in in the 40s. Yeah, no, he came in in 1947. It was all with sevens. Yeah. I remember. It's just sad that like, like I I understand like well he would have just been back in the library by himself. He didn't have his bird, but then he since he's been in there for so long that was like his home because like that's the first thing i said is like when they gave him parole and he like freaked out and like held that little knife to the one guy's throat i'm like he literally has nothing and no one on the outside world where is yeah. he gonna go who's gonna take care of him how is he gonna work and then when he got that shit job at the grocery store bagging groceries and they're like double bag it it's like <laughs> He's an old and when man. It's sad when he's writing, he's like, my hands always hurt. Like, yeah. damn. Because I'm thinking, like, do you think it would be wrong to have, like, a section of a prison for people who are institutionalized, that they've done their time, and if they want to stay, it's like, they're not still behind bars. There's an area that they can live in, but... Yeah. You know, to help the prison out, whether they worked in the library, they could continue working in the library. Well, it would be really hard because it, cause especially people who have been institu institutionalized, there is that um, concern that if they're friends with people that they could, you know, that, but you know, that's true. No, yeah. You know, we don't know like who's been connected or what, but another movie that I love um, that I've considered picking is Green Fingers. Like, I've that's an, yeah it's that. another prison movie but it's from the uk um and there was somebody but well i don't want to ruin it because i do i think i'm going to pick it um but it talks about institutionalized not to this degree where somebody gets out who's been in there for like 50 60 years oh. but there should be but we're also like looking at this like with today's mindset where they didn't have that back then yeah. But also, I think what I like about this movie so much is the topics that Stephen King and um, what's his name? Frank Darabont. Dar Darabont. 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 Um, what they created, it's still like character types today in real life. You know, like what what do you do if you've been institutionalized for so long, and when you get out? Um, and then the fact that like red 
the first two times when he went in front of the parole, you pointed it out. He was just telling them what he thought that they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, he was just like, I don't give a shit. You know, what is he like? Stop wasting my time, Sonny. Yeah. And, stamp your and, paper. and yeah, stamp your little paper. And he got ex accepted to get on parole. Um, you know, there's just there's a lot of character types. And also, too, we see like we tend as a society, like overall, to look down at criminals, mm -hmm. like or prisoners, I should say, um, and like dehumanize them where and i'm not saying here give cable and all that i'm not saying that but to to give them a human life right because they are human beings um we even see like the whole fresh meat scene or fresh kills fresh fish, fresh fish. um where the fat guy you know this fat what is that fat ass <laughs> wins by a nose yes. of course the fat character has to be beat to shit yeah and and gets but, killed but can i just interject really quickly and go back um what i thought was so genius was the fact that they killed him right and then remember andy asks what was his name and the other guy says well it doesn't matter now he's dead in the credits he doesn't have a name it just says fat ass <laughs> I didn't catch that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that's literally like, like, oh, what did you do? I was in this amazing award-winning movie. Oh, who'd you play, fat ass? <laughs> like, literally, that was the title. But going back to it, you see, I think his name is Woodward. Um, Hayward. A uh, Hayward, and he he was all like, <laughs> giddy giddy, whatever. And then when he found out he died all of a sudden you saw an internal reflection within him like oh wow like i caused in a sense i caused the chain of you know of what is the chain of effects or events events thank you because like in the prison he was like just shut the fuck up shut the fuck up like shut up you know and but he you know they had already started started egging him on and that got to be crazy too like the the fact that um they do such a good job of, of kind of conveying that feeling of what it's like when you know you're you're in prison and you know that loneliness, the the fear that you feel, um, like, like you have to whenever they look over your shoulder because huh? yeah, like and, don't and, even trust your friends because they'll sell you out too. And the 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 shots too, like there was sometimes like with the cinematography, there were shots where like for instance when Andy's going into the prison for the first time and he's looking up. And you just see how high the walls seem, and it's like there's no way you're ga getting out of this. Or just um, a nice scene, like when he was playing the music, and then you have all the inmates out in the in the yard, and they're just staring up at the speakers. Did you know that was Tim Robbins' idea that was improvised to turn up the music? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So the music was actually playing through the speakers. Yeah. Oh. Well, see, I was or, like, or just the action was improvised. One or the other. Like when that happened and he locked the guard in the bathroom, I'm like, dude, you're gonna get beat to shit. You're gonna be like mm -hmm. that one mean guard is gonna come out and like I think he was uh, banking on the fact that he was the golden boy there. So while they could do things to him, it would it wouldn't be as excessive as anybody else who wasn't doing like the warden's taxes and the taxes of like everyone. You know, exactly. They they you know they could go to a certain limit and not for the past and i think that's what he was betting on that yeah i could do this and i i don't have to fear that i'm gonna die or be crippled or anything and the actor who played the mean guard the one who's like shooting everyone beating everyone he actually starred in this movie or not movie this series on hbo called carnival do you guys remember that no he played this like insane priest that was like almost like not a prophecy, but he was able to like see things that were going to happen and mm -hmm. his like power goes to his head and he plays crazy. Like the evil characters. Very mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Clancy <laughs> Brown. That's who it is. Clancy Brown. Yeah. He's been in a lot of stuff. He really does. Like he's typecast as, as the uh, evil villain. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's done. He to his name. He has 292 credits to his name. That's, that's a lot of work. Crazy. That's like Danny Trejo. <laughs> Danny Trejo got like a thousand movies made. <laughs> Machete. Uh, <laughs> you should pick that for one. Did you ever see the movie Machete? 
Um, it's so ridiculous. I it's like polar. Say <laughs> it's like you a might have polar. that's that's the Mexican guy with the scars on his faces, right? Yeah. Well, I think those are pock marks. Oh, yeah. uh, scars, pock scar marks. Yeah, I guess same thing. Um, so. I want to know what you guys think about the casting overall because I was surprised at how many celebrities were um, lined up for Andy and Red, and I want to say this might have been one of like Freeman's earliest because he didn't get into acting until later in his life. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that specifically Freeman was um, Darabont's, Darabont's, whatever his name is. Um, ideal cast member, even though technically Stephen King's character was, was a white. aged white redhead. Yeah, and why. and and that was the throwback when he's like, "I'm Irish." Maybe I'm Irish. It's because yeah. the character in the book is Irish. Oh, it's yeah. a white dude. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what did you guys think of the casting? Overall? I love Morgan Freeman. Like his voice is yeah. so calming. Mm -hmm. He could literally tell you that like he's gonna like slaughter your entire family and still make it sound pleasant. <laughs> like I'm oh god everyone you love <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna love it. <laughs> I remember reading an old meme like God like 10 years ago where it said that um anything that M Morgan Freeman says sounds like like a theatrical something like super like amazing mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the meme was like i have a hole in my sock <laughs> it just sounds amazing i mean i need to go poop you know <laughs> like, like yeah. his voice is just so like it is calming and you know what's really sad is like since he's getting up there in age i had this thought i was like you know when he finally goes it's actually going to be really sad. <laughs> and who's going to narrate it? I hope that he he like he narrates, narrates his own life. That would be the, the epic. Life. That this would be the life. epic mic drop if Morgan Freeman pre-plans his like speech of anything. I don't know. But what about Andy? I think they were perfect yeah. for each other and and like the the casting um even the even the characters like you mentioned, like Hayward, there was the other guy I can't name that he had more of a long face. Yeah. And even like they fit the look of prisoners and they fit the look of like just guys who have just had rough lives. And yeah. and I think that all around everyone, even Brooks, I mean the warden, he was a detestable character. He he played that beautifully. Very well. Um the young kid that looked like Elvis. I'm not with gonna, the Elvis chops. So hot. <laughs> um, I would, I would actually like. Usually, I don't care because, if, like, if there's a remake, because I don't have to watch it. But I think this will be one of the rare movies that I will actually be angry if I hear that there's a remake. I don't care if there's like Why? recasting because I think this, I, I believe that this movie is so perfectly done that I truly do not think that another set of cast can redo this film because when you think of red <laughs> and when they can think, just bring back the old people be like what are you gonna do well I'm probably by that time they'll cgi everybody but <laughs> you don't even just, need actors anymore no it just need computers um and like face facial recognition no i i just i'm a firm believer that when something is done so well that there is no need to remake it whatsoever. Because when you think of Shawshank Redemption, especially for people like us who've seen it so many times, who do you think? You think Morgan Freeman and you think Tim Robbins. I don't even think of Red and Andy per se. When I think of it, like these are it. I can't imagine anybody else doing it. And then if it's redone, they're gonna change it to fit the times. I don't want them to change. They're going to change times. it, and it's going to be in a women's prison, probably. <laughs> and then somebody's going to be something like non-binary, or someone's going to be like 
red will all of a sudden become Asian. I would like to see like, the Punjabi Shawshank Redemption. But then the make it. But India. then make it in. Make it from Bollywood. Then. No, I know. Like, like. Oh just, God! Imagine if they did the dance. Because remember, That'd be amazing. remember when I brought up? He I don't dances remember. Dances out of his tunnel. Like. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember what. Uh, what what movie we were reviewing? <laughs> That would be because like the, the the thing and it's like all I keep thinking is at the end of Slumdog Millionaire is like hi yo no it's hi, John yeah I don't remember what movie we were reviewing when I brought it up that I was like I wonder if other countries have like versions of mm -hmm. our classic movies done you know for them and that's why I'm saying it. well that I will accept I'm talking about. Like what we've been getting regurgitated for the last few years is, well, I want to remake it for today's time and I want to change the characters to fit my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, if a movie is done well enough, like I can understand if it's a shit movie, then yeah, redo it, make it better. But when a movie is done, so like I I have gone into debates with people over, I mean, granted, it's old tiny, but there's a movie called My Fair Lady. It's based off of a play called Pygmalion. And um, Audrey Hepburn plays Eliza Doolittle. And originally, the Broadway play was, um, what's her face, from Mary Poppins, Sound of Music. I can't think of her name at the moment. Barbara. No, it's not Barbara. Jessica. What, whatever her name is. <laughs> Um, exactly. She originally played Eliza Doolittle, and she was supposed to, but I can't remember why she didn't end up with it, but Audrey did, and Audrey couldn't sing. They actually dubbed her her music um, or her singing voice, and people have told me, it should have been What's-Her-Face, and I'm like, no, when you think of that movie, you think of this, and if you redo it, it's not going to be the same. No, or, you know? or, or the new it thing, and I know I'm going to catch hell for this, is make your main characters black. So they'd probably redo everything, make Andy black, make or all women. the Gordons. Or women. Or women. Um, yeah. Because like what they, did with, um, what they did with Ghostbusters, how like <sighs> they, uh, oh, it's going to be, we're doing redoing Ghostbusters. But in a way that kind of worked women. here because if in the original story Red was was Irish was white and they made him into Morgan Freeman. No, but that but I'm talking about an established film and to redo Oh, I, I film. don't think it should be redone. No, that but that's my point. It's one thing I think in a book that if it's the first time on film and if it's done well, mm -hmm. it works. No, you I know what I, would be cool though if they redid this movie but make it from like a juvenile detention center. Like these are kids who are like 18, 19, but they're, cause I think when you're 20, you're aged up to the adult. It depends prison. on which state. But the oh. question is, are you remaking it? Or are you just making another movie that kind of fits the plot? True. You know, I mean, like, it's like it, it goes back to this. If they do end up remaking this movie, do it shot for shot cast it just how it is cast in this movie like yeah you can't get morgan freeman to pay, play the character but andy's white uh red is black and cast all the other characters within their own race i just point? yeah i always argue what's yeah the what's point? what's the point of that if it already exists and if it's already a great movie what's the point of doing anything shot for shot because like, so wasn't the well, because with the, like that? With, no, with, the earth cycle remake with like the way I see it is with today's filming techniques and um, all the CGI and the effects, you could potentially have a really great remake if they just follow the old movie, but amp it up with better special effects and all of that. Well, I argue the witches. Okay, but they bastardized the witches like that's not even close to the but witch. then is that a but, but? No, but is that if, just but what if it was shot but what if it was shot for shot they didn't like change the location they didn't change the look of the actors but they use special effects with like you know to to make the high the grand high witch scarier because i would argue that 
she was scary at the Angelica Houston one compared mm. to this one. And they relied so much on CGI and special effects yeah. that, and it didn't look cheap. It was just executed poorly. I think like it would have been so much cooler, like in the witches, if they like the one witch that was like, Luke, I have some candy for you. Or like, I have a snake. Don't you want it? It would have been cooler to see again, a real snake instead of a stupid CGI shit. If with today's effects uh, or effects, if they made that witch's outfit, like a general uh, Angelica Houston war for Anne Hathaway, I mean, everything has gotten so much better. Think of what they could have done. They could have made her even that much like more grotesque. But do you think that the move towards um, more CGI has kind of like Ruined. hurt the practical effects? Because I think, I feel like whenever I think of people that do practical effects, I feel like it's just like one small group that's like, you know, they're, they're, they're what is it like it's they're purists art. like they're it's, a dying art. it's like a it's like a cult uh following for people that do like the practical effects where yeah. everything mainstream is just cgi it's cgi it so when so you then, have people like nick taro and there's other um people that do practical effects it's like it just seems like they're just like a really small group in this bigger ocean of just so bringing it back to shawshank with the concept of with today's effects and movie how like this movie would not have been improved by CGI because there was no need for it. I would have to rely on the actors and I feel like acting today has become way worse than it was before. I yeah. think that back acting in the day there were a lot more there, there, yeah, there were a lot better actors within the nineties, even up until like the two thousands than they were than they are say like twenty ten and after. Well, because you know why acting sucks now is because people don't actually genuinely know how feelings work. Like, okay, you're playing someone sad. Okay, so you're gonna have to be like hysterical or hysterical and angry or hysterical, borderline suicidal. Like it's not just normal feelings. It doesn't ever feel real. It just feels like over the top, like we're watching like a soap opera instead of a normal person's Do reaction. you think it, it helps that a lot of actors, they they also did Broadway? Mm. Like they did a lot of plays before they actually went mainstream yeah. into Hollywood? Because I feel like you, you kind of build your craft doing that and then, you know, transitioning into doing movies and, and television, then just I'm fresh out of like acting school and yeah, now I'm gonna but be- I took a three hour you know, acting class I exactly. now on YouTube, I got this. <laughs> but like, I, somebody wearing a beret. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I wonder too, cause I like, it's hard cause I remember growing up in the nineties and the two thousands hearing my mom and her friends saying the exact same thing we're saying in our mid thirties, mm -hmm. right? Like it could just be like, we, we have a fonder memory of a certain time, but also too, a lot of these actors that we have grown up and we've enjoyed, they're in their late thirties, forties and fifties. Well, you know, not and we're getting a lot more younger actors that are still like, in their figuring teams. their shit out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess, I mean. I kind of like the whole it's, acting it's, was good. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's just, all the movies out today, like, you know how we did the compare and contrast for The Witches? We need to do that same setup for The Craft because they're remaking The Craft. It looks like it's going to be a complete shit movie and they changed up all the characters and now they have their token white girl, token black girl, token Mexican and token like other white girl. And I'm like, that wasn't like non-binary. Yeah. Oh my God. The girl with the short hair. I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I, I didn't watch the crap like, growing up. So she's going to be the lesbian or she's going to be like, I'm, I'm gender fluid or some bullshit. <laughs> Ugh. Why are but, you laughing before? Because before no, she I, went into her rant, I just, you just started laughing. I laugh because it's like, you know, we you you usually say, well, what if they, re why don't they remake it? And it's like every time you mention a remake of something that you like, 
it's always why are they making this? Why are no, they making no, this? No, no, like, like I was excited for the remake because with mm -hmm. all the special effects nowadays, they can make it so well, but then they fuck with the cast. They make their token bullshit diversity characters <laughs> instead of redoing the actual yeah. movie. Like literally, like, like the cast now, they like have the token black girl, the token Mexican, the token white girl, and the other token white girl who was probably gender fluid, some lesbian bullshit. You can like, get on a bus with all those tokens. Yeah. <laughs> you can ride down to Shitville. <laughs> and like, and another thing they added that pissed me off is they did some stupid, like, um, charmed magic tricks where all of a sudden light comes from their fingers. They can go like, ooh, we're magical. And I'm like, that wasn't in the original. Like, it, I it just never looks charmed. so. I thought that was such a stupid show. Yeah, it, it literally just. It, it just looks like it's going to be terrible, but I'm going to watch it because I love the craft and I want to see it. But then I'm, I'm already going into it after seeing the, ooh, we're magic. I'm like, this is going to be stupid. I think of when we went to that rave and that kid with the light gloves. That kid was high on cocaine. <laughs> he was high on something. No, he, he, he admitted that he did all the coke. Oh, and, oh and that's his girlfriend's right. Gonna be mad that's right. He, I forgot about that. My girlfriend's like, he would not leave us alone. He'd and then leave, he had the little light fingers. He back, he's, those gloves. <laughs> and he's like, want, to do, want me to do a show for you? <laughs> that's when I looked at him. I was like, I'm too old for this fucking shit. And then there were guys older than us in suits. You remember them? It's like two black guys in suits. Yes. They looked like they were in their 40s, 45. That was such a weird, weird fucking thing we went to. But... It's I, not I, I, it's not. So, <laughs> we didn't talk about the the the. Well, cons. I mean, I think yeah, we should yeah wrap it up with the cons. Well, my con, and this is this is what kept it from being a ten, and bumped it down to being a nine. I felt like it was a really big plot hole. Um, before Andy, like the night before his escape, he goes and he starts talking to Red, and he's telling him, "Oh, promise me if you ever get out of here, uh, do you know where Buxton is? There's a long." rock wall and under a tree i banged my wife and there you're gonna find a rock that has no earthly business yeah. being there and then under in it, the remake something. that's just like <laughs> there's a lot of rock wall and a tree where i banged my wife there's there's all i keep there. thinking is that creepy guy who actually did kill the wife and the golf pro with his or like his, his um, teeth. Those probably his teeth. No, they weren't because you can actually see where they were a little separated. Mm -hmm. No, those were definitely fake teeth. But when he's like, and I killed, I killed the bitch too. <laughs> like the <so> fuck. <funny. laughs> so so anyway, when uh, <laughs> that's when, the remake. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the remake starts. <laughs> Shawshank. Oh god. <laughs> Welcome to Shawshank. <laughs> and then a laughing. Hold on. I need to set up for. Oh, I should just do the rest of the thing like this. Like, okay. dig in, melt it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, when he when he tells them all that, and then he tells them, um, there's a little town called Sewataneo, and then after that, he plans his escape. Right, he escapes. Now, Red is there for another, what, year or so before he gets paroled? Like, when he finally gets out? Andy was relying on him and not forgetting the name of the town in order to find him. Because when Red finally gets to the tree and he reads the letter, it nowhere does it say the name of the town. It says, do you remember that town that I told you of? And then you see Morgan Freeman, he stops and he's like, say what, Taneo. And it's like... What if he forgot that? What if, if he had he, like dementia? What if, what if he said, <laughs> Cancun? What if he forgot? <laughs> what country do I need to go to? And he ends up going to Switzerland. So, so that to me was a big plot hole because Andy is relying too much on him remembering yeah. what he told him without sending him any kind of word. Because even when he sent them the postcard, it wasn't addressed and it just had like a thing of Fort Hancock, Texas. That it was postmarked from Fort ball, Hancock. Though. Yeah. And it's like, how did he know? Like, what if Morgan Freeman forgot? So I thought that was a that was kind of a plot hole. Yeah, what if he forgot? I thought about that too, but then I was thinking, like, what if someone else stumbled upon this thing before Morgan Freeman? 
Like, what if there was another couple that were banging on the wall? I mean, it probably was a the, popular the, tree. <laughs> like, dislodge the black rock that wasn't heavenly supposed to be there. <laughs> but earthly. Earthly. <laughs> or, no, had no earthly business. And then what if they're like, wow, what's this? And then they find all the money and they just take oh. the money and rip the yeah, note right? off. <laughs> and wait a minute. He's, he's also relying on the fact that Red could find the tree to begin with. Because it's in Buxton, and if we remember right, Red had to buy a compass just to find the tree. He did, because he said that there is an old tree that looks like it belongs in a Robert Frost poem or story, and there's a long uh, rock thing. Because I even told you, how, how did he know where to find that rock? Because that rock was buried under multiple rocks. My question is, how did he know where to find the tree? Because if he says, he said he had, because remember they talked about, he's like, oh, I know Buxton. He's like, there's a lot of hay fields there. He's like, no, but there's a specific one. So he probably, what if he asked around? Or what if he went to every single one? And he's he like tired. And he's like, I gotta be at work tomorrow. The whole tomorrow. time he was like, freaking, freaking Andy. Can't <laughs> make my but it's not a word. <laughs> he's sanding a boat right now. I got my ass in this lion's infested. Well, that and he field. had to like walk through a thing of woods. Yeah. So you could get to the ticks. open field. <laughs> so now he has ticks. Ticks. I did. He probably got ticks. Now he has Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Andy better have a plan for that one. Uh, what a lot of taxes. <laughs> What about the plot hole, like, with the broken pipe? I never thought about it. Uh, the pipe, when he burst that pipe open and all the shit came flying out, right? Wouldn't that have ultimately backed up the pipe? Because usually when, when you have a full pipe, because, Clint, you saw all the shit full compass. I don't think it would it would it I, have backed up. I think all the water would have come out of the out of the toilet. But I'm like just saying, like, toilet, I, that's what I mean, no like, something, the toilets would have had either shit in it or no water at all, and I'm wondering, like, in the entire prison. Yeah. So, who wasn't noticing And the what? smell? Like, all yeah, there had to have been some kind of a backup of some sort. Mm -hmm. And did you guys think, like, <clears throat> that tunnel, like, the, the little hole he put was so tiny compared to his, like, big-ass body and then when he's like crawling through the tunnel, I was like, this is giving me anxiety. Because so I'm like, this dude's going to get stuck. What if he gets he's stuck die and he dies shit. in there? Yeah. That or what if like he didn't know which way to go because he like shined his flashlight this way, this way. And he's I like, think he was looking for the flow. <laughs> Yeah, you because would know with the flow. It, if he saw how it was flowing, he would know the direction to go. Like, like I, I really thought about that. What if he went the wrong way and he's sitting there crawling and crawling and crawling? They said he crawled for like what half a mile. No, yeah, yeah, yeah half, half a mile. And, shy and, under half a mile. Yeah. And like, what if he figured out, shit, I went the wrong way? He would not be able to scoot back and turn around. Like, he'd be stuck. Like, you, oh, God. Do you know how long that is, if you think about it? From the moment <laughs> we walk out of our house to Angel's house. No, I that's ha I never thought Crawling. about it. That is half oh. a mile that's in shit. With, in, yeah. <laughs> and that was, that was another thing I told her. Like, with that... He would have, there was no way he wouldn't have been sick afterwards because when it initially burst, it went in his face. He would have got it in his eyes. He would have had pink eye. He would have probably got some in his mouth. He got hepatitis A now. <laughs> <laughs> he would have had some fudge teeth. I don't know. No, a corn all corn. <laughs> corn. <laughs> Some extra peanuts, peanuts yeah. and corn. Look, they're he, dead. <laughs> like he should, to the bird. <laughs> he should have saved them from Brooks. Oh, for the humane rest society. In peace, yeah. It was just so <laughs> gross that whole shit scene. Like, oh god. Mm. But there's it's, just so many good lines in this movie too. Oh, Y'all yeah. gotta admit, there is some really good lines in this movie. I still say, I just miss my friend. And man, <laughs> up and vanish like a fart in the wind. <laughs> Fuzzy britches. <laughs> I love this fucking movie. Um, but I, I think we should wrap this up. I guess. Anything Never. else? Should there be a Shawshank too? No. no. <laughs> Back to the hood. <laughs> Straight out of Shawshank. <laughs> oh, God. Well, take us out, girl. Well, 
that's all we got for you guys today. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next Saturday for another movie. So in the meantime, smash that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you get notified of all new content. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Fix that. Joe Shake.